Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another Tumblr tutorial. I'm really excited about today's video. In today's tutorial, we are going to make a buffalo check striped tumbler. We're going to use a big boy. We're using a 40 ounce skinny tumbler and we're just going to create a really pretty sophisticated glitter fall stripe. I had a lot of fun making this and I really hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not already and be sure to check out the description box for everything you'll need. I'll have a full supply list down there, discount codes, links to follow me on social media. If you want to join my group, shop on my website, all of that stuff is always down below in the description box. Okay. I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and let's go. working with a big boy today and what we're going to do on this tumbler is some plaid stripes so I've created a template that we can use for this design I will have this available on my website in 20 ounce 30 ounce and the 40 ounce skinny straight sizes if you want to use a different size cup you will have that option so to start I've cut out our template and I'm using my favorite stencil vinyl this is the aura mask 813 masking film. I get this on Amazon and I will link it down below in the description box for you. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of all of this excess vinyl. And now the hardest part of this entire tutorial will be getting this stencil vinyl onto our cup cleanly. So we're going to really take our time with this and do our best to get it on the best we can. First, what I'm going to do is get rid of as much excess vinyl from around our template as I can. We're going to take our transfer tape and I'm going to take a little bit of the backing from my transfer tape and I'm going to cut it away and I'm going to make sure that everything on my template is covered. And then I'll just lay my transfer tape down. I'm not trying to line up the grid marks or anything. No big deal. So right here I had a little flaboo with my transfer tape and the backing, which was just lovely to deal with. <laughs> but anyway, you'll want to make sure that you don't have your transfer tape folded in half so that it doesn't get caught like mine did. But I just took a brand new piece of transfer tape and started over essentially. Okay, now that we've got our transfer tape on... We can start to apply this to our tumbler and we're going to take this really, really slowly. Like I said, we want to make sure that we get this on correctly. Before I put this on, I need to prep my tumbler. So I'm going to sand it down and then wash it with dish soap and water and then we'll be ready to put the stencil on. For our glitter plaid, we're going to do basically a simple buffalo check pattern. So for the plaid, we're gonna use Pond House and Goddess. Both of these are from Peachy Olive Glitters. So for our first color, we just need Goddess by itself. And then we'll need Pond House by itself. And then for the middle color, we're gonna take Goddess and Pond House and we're gonna mix them together, half and half. All right, my tumbler has been prepped and now we can apply the vinyl to the cup. So what I wanna do is have my plaid section be on the top and then we'll go plaid, stripe, plaid, stripe, plaid, stripe. So I'm gonna start by trimming up these edges to make them as straight as possible. And I'm going to use the top edge of our vinyl, of our template, to, you, to apply this to the cup, basically. So I'm not going to use the handle. Typically, when I do a wrap on a handled tumbler, I'll use the handle as a guide. But what I'm going to do here is use this top border as my edge to make sure everything is straight. So I'm going to 
come around here and I'm gonna make sure that this is lined up as best as I can get it, like as good as possible. <laughs> I'm just gonna make a little cut in my transfer tape so I can keep this on. And we're just gonna completely ignore the handle during this first glittering process. We're gonna make the handle just a solid glitter color so it doesn't need to be anything special. Okay, so that looks kind of straight to me. Let's see. Clean, crisp edge up at the top. We have a good clean edge at the bottom. And then for the bottom, this stripe will just carry down to the bottom. So it doesn't really matter if this line is straight because um, this is all going to be one thing. We want to make sure that this is straight because that's going to set the tone for the rest of the design. So what I want to make sure of is that when I smooth this on, you want to keep your backing on during this entire process. When I smooth this on, that this is going to be straight and it's not looking super duper straight. So I'm going to pick this up and adjust it. Okay. So I think we're on, I think we're pretty straight. So what we're going to do now is start on this end of the tumbler. I'm going to use some tape just to reinforce this, keep it all in the same spot. Now remember, this is stencil vinyl. We're going to remove it, so we don't care about where the seams are. We just want everything to line up and be right. And then when we remove everything, you won't be able to see a seam anywhere. So don't worry about, you know, where you're starting your wrap or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of the backing away from our vinyl. And we're just going to start to smooth this onto the cup and we're going to go mondo slow here. We want to make sure that everything is laid down flat and smoothly and that we don't have any mistakes here. So I'm going really, really slow as you can see, making sure that all of my vinyl is releasing from the backing and that my vinyl is smoothly laid down onto the cup. And once we get to a point where we're about to hit the other side or hit the handle, we can go through and we can remove our tape. And then we'll lift up this transfer tape and we'll start to work the vinyl around the handle portion of the tumbler. And you want to be really careful when you remove your transfer tape too, because you don't want to lose any pieces. And that's okay if your vinyl doesn't want to stick. Just that's why we're going slow. Especially in the plaid stripe sections, your vinyl might be very much inclined to lift up because we've got all these small pieces. So you just want to take it really, really slow. Once you get to a place where you've got enough, you can cut off that transfer tape and we'll lay the rest of the template down and then we'll remove the rest of the transfer tape all at once. Okay. Now this is where things get a little tricky because we want to make sure that everything lines up the right way. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna cut this line. And I want these shapes to line up with each other. And we're looking actually pretty good here. They're not too bad. So I'm gonna just lay those down. I'm gonna cut off this excess here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna lose this little bit of spot because of the handle being there. We will need to work around the handle. So down here, same thing. We just wanna make sure that these edges line up right.
So the goal here is just to have these edges line up. The overlap is fine. We're gonna get rid of it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now what I can do is push this middle portion back through, and we can line everything up that way. Okay, now that everything is laid down, we can remove the transfer tape. Now again, we wanna do this really, really slowly. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna be as careful as can be with this, really taking my time and just making sure that all of my little elements are stuck down to the cup and then peel the transfer tape away. Okay, our template is applied. That was a journey. <laughs> so now that we've got this applied, we could map out where all of our colors and everything are going to go, what everything's gonna be. So I've got Pond House, Goddess, and then I've got a 50-50 mix of the two that we're gonna use as well. So that's our color story. And then these three stripes are just going to be a solid glitter color. So this is gonna be glitter, glitter, and glitter. And we're gonna map out our plaid with the Sharpie first so we know where everything's gonna go and we don't have any confusion and we don't mess anything up because we definitely don't wanna do that. All right, we've got everything marked out. And one mistake I made when I resized this to be a little bit wider, the original template is not like this. So when you buy the template, you don't have to worry about it, but I made it a little bigger and I didn't account for the squares being perfectly mapped out or mathed out to not have any duplicate colors next to each other. So I will have duplicates next to mine, like two of the same colors, but in the original template, just use it the way it's sized and it will be fine, okay? So I'm gonna have duplicates, but when you buy the template and you do this, you will not. So let's just pretend that those aren't there. It's okay. They ended up right behind the handle anyway, so it'll be totally fine. No worries. So what we're going to do now is go through and do our plaid first, and then we'll do the glitter, the solid glitters later. And I'm gonna start with Pond House because that's the darkest color. I'm gonna use this little brush here. And I'm gonna use my Delta Ceramco acrylic paint. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my paint. Get a lot of my paint. And I'm gonna use Mod Podge for this project because we have so many glitters going down so close to each other, so back to back. I wanna use something that's gonna dry a little bit more quickly than the glitter glue would. So we're gonna use Mod Podge because it dries fast. Oh boy, holy moly. It came out like a hurricane, didn't it? Okay. That's probably still too much, but whatever. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna find all of my spots that are marked with a P, P for Pond House. Well, this isn't really tinting anything very much, but that's okay. It's the good thing about using nice high quality glitter like Peachy, you don't really need to base coat because it covers so well. Okay, our sections are painted, so I'm gonna take my pond house and I'm gonna cover each of those little squares. And we can see the Mod Podge dried a little bit too fast. So I'm just gonna go in and add some more 
right over that. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat this process on all of the rest of our little peas and we'll move on to the next color. Okay, now our Mod Podge isn't totally dry yet, but I am going to go through and just brush off as much of this as I can from in between all of our squares and sections. Just being really careful. I don't want to mess up any of our spots. Now immediately after brushing away the excess glitter from Pond House, I'm going to go through and I'm going to peel up all of my M's and that's going to be the next color we do. So we're going to do all of the mix of Goddess and Pond House after this dries. So I'm going to peel all of these up and then I'm going to let my cup sit and dry for about 20 minutes before we actually go in and glitter all of those mix sections. Now because we already have glitter down when we paint these mix sections, we want to be really, really careful because we don't want to get any glue over that glittered section that we already have. So we were careful in the first round, but we need to be even more careful in the second round and then like a million percent careful when we go in and we glitter goddess. So you can see I'm really taking my time being careful here to not get any glue and paint mixture on the pond house sections. We wanna keep these squares as clean as possible. So after I'm done glittering, I'm going to take my brush, brush off as much excess as I can, tap it all off, and then just like we did with Pond House, I'm going to go through right away and I'm going to peel up all of those remaining G squares, and then I'm going to let this sit and dry for about 20 minutes while I glitter the other sections before we come in and do Goddess on the top. Okay, so our mix and our dark green sections are dry now so the only thing left for our plaid is to go in and do our goddess sections so for that i'm going to use my mod podge again but for the paint i'm going to use natural beige and then we're going to use goddess obviously just by itself and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to go through with our paint and our glitter and finish this plaid off so we can move on to the next sections. This is going to be so pretty. I'm so excited. <laughs> And now as I work my way through my plaid, as I go, I'm gonna remove that big glitter stripe section because I don't want the glitter and stuff to dry with that over it and risk pulling some of it up. So as I go, I'm just gonna remove that big block of stencil vinyl once we've got all of the areas glittered that border it.
So I let these pot sections sit and dry overnight and then I spray sealed them with two coats of clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum. And now we're ready to go in and do the big glitter sections. So I'm going to use my acrylic paint. This is Raw Sienna from the Delta Creative Ceram Coat. And then I'm going to use my glitter glue this time. And I'm going to mix that together with my paint. And for the glitter we're using Vintage. So I'm going to go through stripe by stripe base paint this here and you can see it doesn't give like the best coverage if you want to do a coat of paint first and then do your glitter glue and paint mixture you can but vintage will give us pretty good solid opaque coverage so i was confident going in just with this one solid coat so once i have that done i'm going to go through with my glitter and you can see how beautiful this color is i was definitely going for more of a I think like fall vibe here um, but of course you can make this Christmas you can make it Valentine's Day you can give no theme at all and do whatever colors you want so don't feel constrained by obviously the colors that I'm doing have fun and do whatever theme you want So I let this glitter glue layer dry for two hours and then I added three separate coats of clear gloss spray to seal all of my glitter in. In between each coat I waited about 20 minutes and then I went in and added one coat of epoxy to my tumbler. This coat was about 40 milliliters so the same amount of ounces that we have on our cup and I'm using the Flint Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy. So I did that coat, let it sit and dry for I think I waited a full 24 hours and now we can go in and glitter our handle before we add any more epoxy to our tumbler. So after that coat of epoxy, I did sand down the handle only really well. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any like globs of epoxy on the handle. And now I'm taking my painter's tape and you can see it. I'm just taping all around that so that we don't get any paint or glitter or glue or anything anywhere other than the handle. I'm going to use the same colored green paint that we initially used for the green plaid because we're going to glitter the handle using pond house just by itself so i'm going to do a nice solid color of the paint let this dry and then we're actually going to use the epoxy method to apply the glitter on the handle so after that paint was dry i added a very very small amount of epoxy to my handle you want to make sure this coat is very thin and very even and then i'm going to take pond house and i'm just going to cover the entire surface area of the handle with the glitter now pond house is a fine cut so it should be really easy for us to get a really nice finish on the handle of course if you want to use a different color if you want to do something else on the handle be my guest be creative have fun do whatever you want Immediately after glittering, I am going to go through and remove all of this painter tape around the handle. You want to be really careful when you do this because obviously you don't want to mess up your epoxy and glitter. You don't want to get any epoxy on your hands. So just take your time, be careful, but you want to get this removed so that your epoxy and glitter don't cure over your tape and make it a nightmare to peel up later. So do this right away and then let your cup sit and dry. I think I left mine overnight. Um, you just want to allow enough time for that epoxy to fully dry before you epoxy over it. So I added another coat of epoxy over our glitter handle. So now we've got two coats of epoxy on our tumbler. And what we need to do is sand it down so it's totally smooth before we go in and add all of our vinyl work. We don't have too many lumps and bumps here, just a couple. Um, I'm not really gonna sand down the handle. It doesn't really need to be sanded, but I'm just gonna sand down the body of the tumbler, the bottom rim, and the top rim. And then when I come back, we will do all of our vinyl striping. Okay, our cup has been sanded down and now we're ready to add all of our vinyl striping. We're gonna line these out to make them look really nice and complete. I am not good at putting stripes on straight, so this will take me a few times to do it. So once I got that first stripe on, I just continued all the way up the tumbler. By the way, this is just regular brown Oracle 651 vinyl, and I cut these stripes at 0.13 inches in width. So now that our brown stripes have been added on, I'm going to take these rose gold textured metallic stripes, and I'm going to layer them right on top in the middle of those brown stripes. Now this vinyl really matches vintage super well. So it's going to kind of tie everything together and I think just give it that extra little oomph. So I'm going to be really careful here to get these as centered and lined up as possible. And I'm not going to cut off the excess because this layers really nicely. So I'm just going to let this overlap 
and then go all the way around just like that these rose gold textured metallic vinyl strips are cut at 0 0.07 in width so just a little bit more than half the size of the brown stripes that we put down first all right so now i'm going to add two more coats of epoxy over this and i'll see you in a sec all right so that's it for this tumblr tutorial i really hope you guys enjoyed it i cannot wait to see what you do with this template i definitely want to make a christmas themed one of these so let me know if that's something you'd like to see on my channel and of course let me know what you think of this design overall in the comments be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos and i'll see you tomorrow for another holiday countdown tutorial okay love you bye